Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel K Devs. So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create this falling ball game in just HTML5 Canvas and vanilla JavaScript. You might have seen the same tutorial on another channel. Well, yes, that's true. It was on another channel named Knife Circus. I actually liked the video, but it was in HTML Devs, but I just recreated it on HTML5 Canvas. So, if you want more HTML5 Canvas videos, you can go check out my friend Frank's channel, that's Frank Laboratory. You can go check out his channel, he also has great tutorials, I'll have a link in the description. So yeah, without wasting any time, let's start. So before starting, I have got three files, index.html, styles.css, and script.js. I have also got this image that I'll be using as the background in this tutorial. Okay, so in the index.html file, I'll create a basic HTML layout. Let's give it a title of Falling Ball Tutorial. Oh, uh, what's happening? Okay, now link the style sheet as well as the script. Yes, yeah, create a canvas element. Now we can actually go to the styles.css where I have some styling, like some universal styling of margin zero, padding zero, and box sizing to border box. In the canvas, I'll add some styling of position absolute, left zero, top zero, background of URL. And you can add the desired location of the image that you have chosen or else you can leave it blank. So I have got it background URL. So yeah, give it a background size of cover with 100% and height 100%. Now you can go to the script.js file where I'll be creating a const canvas that will be equal to document talk query selector for canvas I'll be creating a const C that will be equal to canvas dot get context and the C here is actually standing for the context and for this tutorial we are in the requirement of the 2d context so yeah Let's make the canvas store width to be equal to inner width and canvas dot height to be equals to inner height. Well, why are we doing it in the JavaScript also so that we can get accurate measures in each and every browser. So now if I go and refresh, I can see the beautiful background on the screen. So now what I want to do is to firstly wrap all the JavaScript in a window dot add event listener dot add event listener cause we are going to go for so many refreshes and it kind of ha uh, what we say hangs out the browser but we don't want that to happen right so i'll be just wrapping it around in window dot add event listener load event which will be calling out an arrow function in which all our code will be written, all our charge code will be there. So yeah, before starting, what I want to do is to create a class. Well, if you don't know what a class is, you can just follow along. Well, I'll be creating a class that will be like a father to all these objects, the tile objects that I'll be creating, which will be going upwards, moving upwards. So for that, I'll be just going by creating a class which I'll be calling tile tile with a capital T which will have a constructor draw and an update okay in the constructor I'm actually in the requirement of the X Y width and height because it's going to be a rectangle and also the color now this dot x is equals to x this dot y is equals to y this dot width is equals to width 
and this dot height is equals to height don't forget the color this dot color is equals to color okay so now we can go to the draw as we want to create a rectangle we are firstly going to give it a color that will be c dot fill style is equals to this dot color c dot fill red to create a rectangle which will have an x coordinate of this dot x y this dot y width this dot width and height this dot height now i can just go to the update which will be calling the draw in the tile class which will be this dot draw if i go back and refresh there shouldn't be any errors and we don't have any so now what i want to do is to create a dummy let's just create a dummy tile let's name it box one let it be equal to just a second var box one is equals to new tile and let its x coordinate be 100 y 400 width 150 height of 30 and let its color be blue now we won't be seeing anything at the moment and for seeing the box we actually have to call out its update like box one dot update go back and refresh and unexpected token on which line it is line number 30 why is it on line number 30 unexpected because of that I shouldn't be getting any errors okay yeah we are all set so we have the box so but what happens if I want to create the animation and for that I'll be calling not calling creating a this dot velocity is equals to 2 and in the update I'll be saying this dot y minus equals this dot velocity and if I go and refresh I won't be seeing any animation going on well why is that well that's because the update is getting called only once but we want it to be called out again and again and for that I'll be creating a function let's call it animate which will have a request animation frame for animate we can actually console log console.log some dummy text and if I just call out the animate function go back and refresh I can see the dummy text getting printed in the console window again and again after an animation speed so yeah now what I'll be doing is to take the box one dot update and put it in the animate loop the animate function whatever you want to call it and refresh and we can actually see the animation but what's happening is that the box seems to be getting all stretched out but we don't want that so what we'll be doing is c dot clear rect which will have as x coordinate of 0 y 0 width canvas dot width height canvas dot height because we want to clear the whole screen go back and refresh and we are having a good great animation going on at the moment so what we actually want to do is to create the tiles after equal intervals of time and for that we'll be using set interval which will be set interval function and this function will get <coughs> will get called out after every one second so what I actually want to do after every one second and for that I'll be creating two variables var floors equals to an empty array and var holes is equals to an empty array 
Now if I go back to the interval, I can simply say floors dot push. Push is used to add something to the array. So what I want it to get pushed in is a new tile which will have an x coordinate of 0, y coordinate of canvas dot height because we want it to be right below the screen its width will be canvas dot width because we want it to cover the whole screen and its height let its height be 30 in color let's go for black now what we can do is holes dot push because we want the holes also which will be getting pushed in new tile which will have an x coordinate of math dot random well, for the math.random, let's create a variable where random is equals math.random and just multiply it by canvas.width and subtract 150 from it. Yeah, so its x coordinate will be random, y coordinate. Let its y coordinate be canvas dot height. Its width will be 150. Its height let it be 30. And color let's go with the red. Now we even want to call out the updates. And for that I'll be using a for each in this tutorial. You can even use for, but I just like using for each. So what you can do in the animate function is floors dot for each. <coughs> floor floor dot update same for the holes what we are going to do is holes dot for each hole hole dot update Okay, so we are all set. I can just go back and refresh. So we can actually see beautiful animation going on, just like we had seen out there in the show what I had made earlier. So yeah, the both same scene as we see. So okay, so now what we can start now is to create the player. Okay, so how are we actually going to create the player? Let's see. And for the player, I it seems I can be creating one more class. Yeah, I'm going with creating a new class. Let the class, uh, class with a small c, and let it be named player. Player with a capital P, which will have a constructor, a draw, and an update. In the constructor, we actually require the x, y radius because we are creating a circle. It's uh, what else we require? Yeah, the color. This dot x is equals to x. This dot y is equals to y. This dot radius is equals to radius. And this dot color is equals to color. Okay, so now we can go to the draw and we'll be going through the basic format to create circles and that is C dot begin path and C dot fill style is equals to this dot color c.r to create an arc which will be a circle we can say which will have x coordinate of this dot x y this dot y radius this dot radius start angle and end angle do not matter when we are creating a full circle so if i just let the start angle be zero and end angle be 360 or whatever number you can guess 
it's anti-clockwise just should be set to false if you want to create full circle <coughs> and yeah don't forget the c dot fill cause we won't be seeing anything without that and c dot close path so that we can get a bit smoother browser and in the update as usual we'll be ca calling out the draw now I'll be creating a variable player Well, let's make it as a global variable at the top var player okay well I'll put these empty comments so that I can actually transport myself in my projects very easily see uh, you can open this window, this finder window, in by Control F on Visual Studio. Just write command, and we can just move on with these arrows. So I have this here. So let it be player is equals new player. It's x coordinate. Let it be 100. No hundred. Let its x be master random. Let's multiply it by bracket, and in the bracket, I'm going to write another bracket, which will be having twenty. Now subtract twenty from it. Now I'll be wrapping it in one more bracket. It seems. Yeah, and after the brackets bracket. I'll be adding 20 from it, adding 20 to it. Yes, you can see the format. Yeah, it's Y coordinate, it's Y, let it be 100, it's radius 20 as we have written here, it's color, let it be red. Well, why, which format I have used in the X coordinate? Well, this is a random trick, a random number trick, uh, in which we subtract the minimum like this is the minimum that we can get in the x coordinate and this is the maximum oh its maximum should be canvas to width minus 20 okay yeah so here's the maximum here's the minimum here's the minimum so that we don't have the ball stuck inside the wall so that yeah just the purpose only so yeah now we can actually go in the animate and call out the player dot update go back and refresh and we are having the beautiful ball going nowhere we have to make a move right and for that I'll be using key down event which will be document dot add event listener and it will be a key down event it will get played each time I press any key on the keyboard but to what to do I actually require the event of the key which will give me the event like which key is pressed and all that stuff so I can actually console the log event go back and refresh and if I press the key like a left arrow key I'm getting this if I just open it up you can actually see a lot of information in here maybe I can yeah so you can see here the key it is arrow left so how can we be actually storing all this information and for that I'll be creating a variable not actually one variable let's create two variables var left and var right yeah and in the event list now I'll be saying if event dot key like the key I have pressed is equals to arrow left now what I want to do is left is equals to true and if mm, event dot key is equals to arrow right 
then what I want to do is the right to be equal to true but it won't be working all fine and for that I have to create document dot add event listener and this time it will be a key up event you can even comment that out for some time so that you can understand what the purpose is left equals to false and right equals to false well why are we in the need of a key op event well that's because if I press the left arrow key and if I let it go it will it think that it still has to go left and won't stop so when I remove my fingers from the arrows what I want to do is to stop moving the left equals to false and right equals to false so now what we should do is that we should go to the player class and in the update we can just add some if statements that if this dot x not this dot x no 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 if we are set to go left then this dot x minus equals this dot velocity don't we have velocity just a second so yeah this dot velocity is equals to let it be 4 yeah minus equals this dot velocity and if we are set to go right then what to do is this dot x plus equals this dot velocity now if I go and refresh if I press right the ball is going right if I press left the ball should be going left yes as I expected but let's just make it a, go a bit more in the speed right I like speed let it be 6 go and refresh seems better to me maybe 5 would do it yeah so we'll be going with 5 okay so now what I want to do is to set a max go left and max go right because if we are going like outside the screen we are not getting any retention it is not getting thrown back we can easily pass through the walls so what I want to do is that in the update I'll add two if statements that if this dot x plus not plus minus this dot radius is smaller than zero then this dot x is equals to this dot radius and if this dot x plus this dot radius is bigger than canvas dot width then what I want to do is this dot x is equals to canvas dot width minus this dot radius yeah so now if I go and refresh it will be giving us a max left and max right so we can't pass zero and same with the right side we can't pass the right so yeah we are good to go now what I want to do is that I might be seeing like glitches cause when these tiles go upwards they are never getting deleted you know so what I want to do as in the floors for each I'll just also demand for the index well what an index is you can just console.log index so what an index is that it will be its number in the updating class like on which number it is in the array maybe not the class the array so yeah what I want to do is if floor dot y is less than zero or maybe 
less than yeah let's go with zero then what I want to do is to call out the set timeout function which will get played after zero milliseconds well it's a bit of a trick to use a set timeout and index and why is that is that you can just try deleting floor directly from it but it won't be working set timeout will, what it will be doing is that it will be creating a safe zone that when we are deleting we are just deleting the one that is above the screen not the, all the one or else if we are not using this at timeout it will be deleting the paddles all over the screen so what we'll be doing in the set timeout is floors dot splice index comma one yeah so splice is used to delete anything from the array now if I actually go in the holes for each I also want to do that same in here if whole dot y turns less than zero now what I want to do is to call out a set time we can just copy paste that copy paste paste yeah and just change the floors to holes if I go back and refresh refresh So if it goes above the screen, let's see what happens. Yeah, so it's getting deleted actually, but it seems if it goes above zero, I have to make it changed to what to say, maybe zero. Not zero, it should be minus thirty. Yeah. Same in the holes, minus thirty. Refresh. My laptop's getting hanged nowadays. Yeah, so we have that done. Come on! Just a second, let it get refreshed. Come on, it's for a YouTube tutorial. What are you doing? Yeah, so we have that. Now I have a moving, moving ball. I have these floors going up, which are getting deleted after they go up. But what I actually want to do is to add some gravity to it. What's the fun without gravity? Okay, so in the class, I'll just go with this dot gravity. Let it be equal to 3. And in the update, I can just say this dot... Uh, this dot y plus equals this dot gravity go back and refresh and I'm having this falling ball let its gravity be 2 not 2 maybe 3 will do it and to make the gravity look a bit more realistic maybe uh, don't worry we can do that in some next tutorial I'm in a hurry we can just complete the game in this tutorial I don't want it to be divided in so many parts so we have that done now let's just add the collisions between the paddle and the ball the plow so I'll be doing all of that in where to do it let it be in the floors itself in the plug class where should we do that so maybe I'll be doing that in the holds class holds for each maybe yeah holds for each let it be in the holds for each so in that if ball 
not ball, it's player, player dot x, not x, firstly it will be y, is uh, bigger than or equal to, uh, bigger than or equal to, whole dot y, and, and, player dot y is less than whole dot y uh, whole dot y plus let it be 10 maybe uh, so what it will do is that to run all this code when the player is right above the hole well, not right above it if it's at the exact y coordinate of that. So yeah. And now the second if statement will be for the collision, like if mm, player dot x is bigger than or equal to whole dot x and player dot x is less than or equal to not uh, wait, 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 wait. it should be adding the player dot radius also yep player dot x plus player dot radius is smaller than or equal to whole dot x it will be minus here where it will be minus yeah here it will be minus here whole dot x plus whole dot width then what I want to do is that well what this code is for that if the player is right inside the hole like right above the hole so what it should be doing is that its gravity Mm, player dot gravity is equals to let it be four and else that means if it's not above the hole then what we want to do is the player dot gravity is equals to minus hole dot whole dot what how do I called it velocity maybe yeah let's go and refresh and ta da we are getting a very bad animation maybe it's uh, somewhat here hold up why let's try refreshing no if player is smaller than whole dot y plus let it be just whole dot height go and refresh why am I getting this animation very bad one this is a very bad one man yeah maybe here I have to add the radius yeah refresh no do I have to add or subtract oh my gosh it is bigger than whole dot y and plaid dot y I think it's correct player dot y is less than whole dot y plus whole dot height or uh, maybe let's just try refreshing again we are still not getting anything plus whole dot height let's put that again what's the trouble why are we getting that? 
Up, 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 up. Okay, so the whole dot radius does not exist. I think I made a mistake. Yeah. I require a drum sound now. Yeah, so we have the animation. Not the animation, I should say the basic setup. A lot of refreshes. Okay, so we have the game, it seems, but it's having a little bit of bug in it. So I think I put the radius here opposite. Let's try setting it to minus and here to plus. Refresh. I think we should be getting a better animation. Yeah, so we have that done. Okay, so now what I want to do is to just add an end game as well as. Hey, wait, I think. Yeah, I am in the need of adding an end game. And for that, I'll be going up above the animate and I'll be calling out an interval. It will be set interval function. which will play after every 100 milliseconds which will be like 10 times a second so what I want to do after every 1 millisecond is to play if statement that if mm, what to do after if uh, yeah so if this dot not this if I'm confused now if player dot a y is small plus minus player dot radius is smaller than zero then what I want to do is to alert you lose with a score of well I haven't added the score yet so let's firstly go and add the score and for that I'll be going to the index.html file and right above the canvas I'll be creating a div uh, maybe I will put it below the canvas element. Yeah, I'll be creating a div which will be having a score and a span and the span what I'll be writing is a zero and I'll just giving the span an ID of let it be score okay so now I can go to the style CSS and in the style CSS I want to add some styling to the score let it be a div some styling to the div let's give it a position of absolute left 20 left and top 20 let the top be 5 maybe pixel don't forget the pixel okay and let's give it a color of what to say we have so many colors to go with let's go with dark orange and do we need anything else to do let's firstly check how it looks okay so we even need to increase its size uh, font size font size let it be 100 pixels let's go and check nope 100 is so large maybe 70 okay 70 seems a bit too big maybe 60 
Okay, 60 seems all fine. Yeah, so font size 60 is okay. So let's also give it a font family of, let's go with Comic Sans. Comic Sans. I think that's it. Go back and refresh. Uh, wait a second. Refresh. Maybe we aren't having the comic signs at the moment. Maybe I'll just go with. Mm, mm, let's just go out with Cascadia code. If you don't have installed, you can go and install it from Google. Just Google Cascadia code download. It's a free of cost font. Cascadia code. Maybe that's it. Why isn't it reading that? Do I need inverted commas? I don't know what the trouble is. Oh my god, gosh. For God's sake to my CSS skills. Just go with this one. Yeah, we are going with this one. Okay, just close the style CSS. I'm over with the styles. So let's create a variable. Score is equals document dot query selector for div and var score number is equals to zero. And in the score. Uh, at the time when we are actually giving it some gravity push, let's just say score to get plus plus. Yeah, and I think we have created, yeah, here in the set interval, we can say the score, we can put the score here, plus score number. Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. I think I put score here somewhere. Score number should be plus plus. Yeah. And I even have to put a game you won alert. And in the alert, I'll be saying you won. And it should be an else if. Else if, when should I want it to go like hooray, you won? It should be when player dot y plus player dot uh, radius turns bigger than or equal to holes. Last one, which will be maybe holes dot length minus one dot y plus holes length minus one uh, maybe it should be two here two yeah it should be two right or maybe the one only yeah so you want with uh not worth with a score of plus score number and we even want to display the score on the screen on the scoreboard and how are we going to do that is score dot text element text con uh, score dot text element wait maybe it should be uh, we should be pulling out the span it should be hashtag score 
Yeah. Mm hmm. Score dot text content. Context or content is equals to score number. We'll just seek for any error. Document is not defined. Okay, 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 okay. Maybe document is not defined. I spelled it wrong. M E N T. I'm having a messy code this time, it seems. Cannot read Y of undefined. Where on which line? On line 91. 91 plaid or y is all than player dot length minus 2. What's the trouble? So, as I can see, the score is getting displayed. The second one. Let's see if the game over is working. Game over is working. And, but after the game over is working, what I want to do is the player dot x is equals to. I can just go and copy paste its x that we had written. That's why I don't use hard coded. Paste. Of course, we want to just reload the page, you know. Or maybe we can can we do something like window dot reload. Something like that. Nope. I think nothing like that actually exists. Maybe. So what I'll be using is window, not window. Yeah, I'll be just going with player dot x is equals to this and hold equals to an empty array floors equals to an empty array and player dot y is equals to hundred maybe that's all what we want okay why of undefined? Why is it showing the why of undefined? Maybe I'll be just going in the else if. Just go with is bigger than or equal to canvas dot height. Okay, so I'll be doing all the same things down here also. And let's just add. Click OK to restart. Here also, click OK. To restart. Come and refresh. And, 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 it seems we have created of our fully functional game maybe I can show you the winning part for that I can just hack it out like gravity just comment out this line refresh I'm going down I won just replace and I can just go up again to show that yes I'm online okay so we are done with the game we have just created this game again okay so I'll be meeting you in the next tutorial with an even awesome game on HTML5 canvas I think I made this game more complicated than it was supposed to be but I uh, just leave it who cares just like that video just click that thumbs up subscribe my channel to get even more updates okay so meet you in the next tutorial